You're here because you're looking for the truth about betting on UFC title fights, and I'm going to tell you what I found, but first, we should look at why. The UFC is the biggest MMA promotion in the world. It's been around longer than any other major promotion like One Championship, Cage Warriors, or PFL. Plus, one can argue that they have the most talented roster in the entire industry. And being that they're the most popular in the space, they get the most attention. So if you're anything like me, you're probably the resident MMA fan in your friend group, which normally leads to you getting texts and calls all the time like, hey, you think is gonna win tomorrow? How fast is Francis Ngannou gonna knock this dude out on Saturday? Yo, John Jones never lost, right? I'm looking at the record right here and it shows a loss. What's that all about? Stuff like that lets us know that the casual fan knows who the champions are and gets excited about watching them fight. And the UFC does a fantastic job of keeping the casual fans engaged by putting on title fights every few weeks. Championships sell pay-per-views more than anything else, and they're the fights that people want to bet on the most. So to answer the question of why UFC title fights, it's simple. That's where most of the money and attention is going, and I want to help you bet on the correct side of these matchups. Now, I won't drag out the answer until the end of the video. I'll tell you what it is now, and the rest of the video will give you context, data, and proof. Title fights have two sides. There's a champion who's defending their title, and there's a challenger who's trying to take it away from them. You should be betting on the challenger every time. What? That might sound like a hot take that might come as a surprise to you, and if this trend doesn't hold up, then this will get clipped and used against me forever, but let's get into the history first. Now, when we look at the history, and I'm only looking at the men's divisions because they've been around for longer, so there's a richer sample size to pull from. Oftentimes, when somebody wins a belt, the perception of them changes completely. Take Leon Edwards, for example, who the casual fan would barely talk about despite being ranked, to now being in welterweight GOAT conversations after winning the title and defending it against Kamaru Uzma. The point of me saying that is not to argue how he's viewed now, but just to show you how quickly the public's opinion can change on a fighter when they become a champion. And to get to that level, UFC champion, that's beyond ranking, making you better than you were before in the eyes of most. Teddy Atlas had that famous tweet last year, winning a title immediately improves you 30%. Whether that's true or not, that's not the point. What I want to look at is the history here. So what I'd like for you to do is pause the video and answer this question real quick. How many times do you think the average UFC champion defends their title. Again, pause the video, take a second, think about it, come up with an answer, and then play the video again. I think the answer would surprise you. The average number of title defenses for a UFC champion comes out to 1.65, not even two defenses. And if we take out the outliers, I'm talking about Demetrius Johnson, Jose Aldo, George St. Pierre, Anderson Silva, John Jones, fighters who have defended the UFC title seven times or more. If we take those guys out, the average number falls from 1.65 all the way down down to 1.27. The average champion isn't racking up title defenses, yet when you look at the betting lines, the champions will be favored, normally by a pretty good amount, most of the time. I went back and I looked at the title fights where a champion defended the belt from the start of 2021 all the way to the end of 2023. That gave us a total of 49 fights to look at. In those fights, a UFC title was successfully defended 29 times while the challengers won 20 of those matchups. Well, quick math will show us that 29 out of 49 times is roughly 59%, while 20 out of 49 times is 41%. Well, if we look at the odds based on that probability, it tells a pretty eye-opening story. If our implied probability is 59%, that should turn into betting odds of nearly minus 145. Good luck getting those kind of odds on a defending champion. Getting odds of minus 145 or better on these champions only happened 14 out of these 49 times. That's about 28.5% of the time, and we're looking for 59%. No bueno. Now again, for our challenge, Challengers in this sample, they're winning about 41% of the time. So if our implied probability is 41%, that should turn into betting lines of about plus 145. The shocking part of all of this is that you would have gotten better odds than that had you taken the challenger 34 out of 49 times. That's almost 70%. When we're only looking for 41%, that's value, baby boy. And frankly, the biggest reason why you should be betting on the challenger. In UFC title fights over the last three years, you would have had more success betting on the challenger every time than you would if you bet on the champion every time if you put the same amount up per wager. So let's look at it as one unit. The amount could be whatever you want. One unit could be $1, $5, $10, $100, $1,000. It doesn't matter. The math will shake out the same. For this example, we'll be using $100 as our unit size. 2023 illustrates this point better than the other two years, but we're still going to look at all three. So let's start with 2023. Here's what it would have looked like if you put one unit on every defending champion. The champions won more than half of the the time. 
time. So you'd be placing a winning bet more than a losing bet, yes. But with the odds that you'll notice here, and this is in chronological order, you would have been down for the entire year ending with around minus three units. On the other side, if you put one unit on every challenger, you would have lost more bets than you won, but because of the odds, you would have finished up nearly 12 units for the year. And here's what it looks like side by side for the year, with the blue line representing the challengers and the red line representing the champions. That's a huge difference. In 2022, the champions won more often, 10 out of 17 times. And if you took every defending champion, you would be up for the year 1.18 units. But even then, taking the challenger and the challenger only, it would have left you up 2.6 units for the year, still better than if you were betting the champions. And lastly, we'll look at 2021, where the champions would have netted you 0.86 units, while the challengers would have netted you 4.76. If you only bet the challengers for the last three years, you would be up 19.17 units, which is a 39% return. If you only took champions in that time, you would be down just shy of one unit today. And now you're probably thinking, hold on, Kunith. If I liked the champion more, I'd put down more than one unit. Okay, sure. And I would rather bet the challenger if I liked the matchup or the champion if I liked the matchup. It all just depends. That's cool. That makes sense. But here's where I challenge that a little bit. Sometimes even the best in the world can watch all the tape. They can study all the habits, focus on every little detail possible leading up to the fight like truly leave no stone unturned and still be wrong. Always keep in mind that this is a very volatile, unpredictable, unforgiving kind of game that we play. A fight card is going to have 11 to 15 fights on it normally. We're just talking about one fight that has shown us in recent years that you might not have to do the impossible task of trying to guess a winner consistently to be profitable. Instead of picking a fighter, you could simply pick a corner, in this case, the blue corner, the challenger. And I understand that part of the fun is trying to figure out who's going to win, talking to your friends about it, watching videos about it. I get all of that. That stuff is fun. That's what I do. But for title fights specifically, there could be a method spawning from the trends that we're seeing. And if you want to go back beyond 2021 to dig up the data for title fights and see if the trend holds even longer, then cool, do that. Let me know what you found. I'm really not hard to find. You can find me on Twitter. You could find me on KunithMMA.com. You can find me right here on YouTube. I respond to every comment. But if you want to experiment with this, here's what I suggest you do. The sports betting industry is extremely competitive right now. So so there are companies out there that are willing to give you bonuses just for playing on their platforms. I personally don't have one to give you because I say no to the places that aren't domestic that reach out for brand partnerships. But there are some major sports books like FanDuel, DraftKings, BetMGM, Caesars, places like this, Rivers Sportsbook, places like this that run promotions from time to time where they'll say give you a deposit match or they'll give you a few hundred dollars to start betting with. Maybe put in a hundred, they give you a hundred and you run this experiment. Play with their money. Let this be the account that you use specifically to bet on UFC main events or title fights, specifically challengers, and test this. See what happens. See if what's been happening for the last three years will continue throughout this year. Because let me tell you, if your unit size, say, is 100 bucks at the end of the year, if you're up plus four units on this account that just does that, that's a pretty good deal. Even this past weekend, Sean Strickland, Drickus Duplessis. Sean Strickland, unsuccessful title defense. I know people thought that fight was close. I thought it was a close fight as well. I thought some of the rounds were close, but when I was watching it live, I scored it 2-3-4 for Drickus Duplessis, challenger. And I had Sean Strickland to win that fight, so if I was going to be biased anywhere, it'd be toward the champion, but the challenger won and you would be up to start the year once again. I'm not telling you to do anything. You don't have to. I'm just telling you about numbers and the patterns that they're making, and this isn't the only pattern I've seen with MMA betting. So if you watch my stuff before, you don't watch my stuff before, but you like this style of video, maybe leave a thumbs up or a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, comment what you think. I'd like to know your thoughts, and if you want to help as best as you can or you find this interesting, share it with somebody you know who's going to be betting on the fights for the next couple of months. I wish you all the best. I'll see you in the blue corner. Thanks.